It's too long. Too long. Patience. Patience. John. John. Peace. Please. Are you not alongside me on this? You, at least, among everyone else here. We need to go. We wait for a sign. Surely our Lord Jesus knows that the Pharisees and their imps are right outside the city gates. Ah, uh, it's the doubter. Stop it. What? Let him in, Simon. It's Peter. So, did our Messiah come visit us again? <laughs> Made some progress, I see. Yes. It's madness. If you do not allow me to focus, you will see what my madness looks like. That's not very Christ-like. Maybe you're not as good of a disciple as you thought you were. He who Jesus loves. John. Do you really think this writing is going to do us any good when the high priest break down that door looking to arrest us? Would you like to know what happens when not only is it evident that we followed this man around, but you're recording the very words that ripped him apart, that drove nails through his hands and feet, studying them, treating this man's words. You as... keep saying that. What? That he was just a man. This man this, this man that. He was, he is not just a man. He is God, and he is alive, and I fear what will happen to you if you do not surrender this devil's pride and let yourself believe. Unless I see the holes in his hands, I won't believe. Well, then you might as well join Judas in his noose. There's a thought. But I would like it on my terms. Hey, hey, don't you dare. That is enough unpleasantness for the day, Thomas. Why don't you go to that corner and, I don't know, sleep until we figure out what it is that we're doing? We're finding unity difficult enough without your wretched faithlessness. That too. All your talk of seeing him risen and you're afraid of a journey to Galilee? When Jesus himself commanded it, you're all hypocrites. Because if you truly believed what Jesus said, while he was alive, surely you must believe that you have enough faith to carry you to Galilee. Well, you're making more sense now than you have in weeks. Tell all that to Peter. God will show us a sign. He'll make it clear that it is safe for our Did journey. Did you just hear what Thomas said? That's who we're listening to right now? Is it? The doubter? Jesus still to see around us. You saw it. Do you remember when he passed through an angry crowd like a ghost? <laughs> the look on their faces when they couldn't find him. And he did say we can do everything he did on this earth. Oh, that's what I'm forgetting. If we do what he told us to do, we will be safe. Peter, everyone, listen to me. This is when the rain begins. The new Jerusalem is upon us. Our savior is waiting for his soldiers and we're hiding in the corner of old Jerusalem. We wait. It will never be safe. It will never be safe for any one of us. Anyone who followed him. We're dead men. We're dead. There's no way to travel around this. I just can't believe. I just cannot believe that I fell for it so simply. All those promises written by the prophets that we've read all our lives, that Israel 
will rise out of its ash heap. And another great king like David will charge through Rome as the tip of the spear and free us all. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes <laughs> round about and see they are all gathered together. They come to you. Your sons will come from afar and your daughters will be carried in the arms. Then you will see and be radiant. Your heart will be thrilled and rejoice because the abundance of the sea will turn to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. First you mock our Christ, and then you mock the prophet? Have you forgotten that you are a Jew? We live by the air of the promises of our God, no matter how many centuries of horror we must bear up. Remember who you are, doubter. If you were truly a Jew after God's heart, your own heart would leap to the joy that our King has come and He has risen. And what are we supposed to do with that fact? That He has risen? If He has truly conquered, He doesn't need us. None of us are good with the sword. None of us trained or battle-hearted. If He has truly risen, why can we not just sit back and watch Rome burn? with a smile on our face. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. Yes, John. I remember that last prayer. It, it rings in my ears every night. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. For their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they themselves may also be sanctified in truth. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those who also believe in me through their word, our Word. I remember. Then you should know how we fight. You should know why I write the words and prayers and miracles of Jesus. Our God gave us truth like no other truth before it. And we have been witnesses to this truth. We followed it around this land for years. That is why we have been chosen. What we carry all men need, and very few have. And if I know our Lord Jesus Christ, we will be sent to carry it into the deepest depths of darkness, till our heads be removed, or till we hang from a cross, or till we are sentenced to die in the wilderness like our fathers before us. That is what we will do, Thomas. We will speak what we know to those who believe and to those who won't alike. What will you do? Peace be with you. Reach here to my hand, Thomas. Be not unbelieving, but believing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My Lord and my God.
He said to Thomas, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. As Jesus ascended from the earth to be at his Father's right hand, those words pierced my heart. Who will believe our report, even centuries after we have fallen asleep? Who will join us in celebration of our forgiveness of sins, of our resurrection to new life? If no one does, I know at least that the mountains must leap and the stones must cry out in worship, and I must stand alongside them until the return of my King, shouting, Hallelujah, amongst all who may hear and be saved.